thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as we all know, one of the major requirements on engineering structural materials is to have a quite good combination of both strength and toughness, or in other words, to have quite decent damage tolerant properties. When we think of now about uh, natural composites, such for example as bone and makeup, can see and know probably that especially in NACA, which is a ceramic organic composite with about uh, 95 volume percent of aragonite platelet, so basically a 95 volume percent containing ceramic with about 5 volume percent of a soft organic biopolymer layer that is surrounding these individual platelets, thereby forming such brick and mortar structure. But of course the ceramic bricks provide the strength of this material and the biopolymer mortar that surrounds these individual bricks basically acts as lubricant in, the, in between these individual bricks which gives them flexibility and also allows for certain sliding processes and gives this material a certain ductility and toughness so altogether it gives the material very good damage tolerance and puts these natural components right at the center here of this Ashby plot where we have the specific strength of different materials and materials class on the y-axis and their specific toughness on the x-axis and we see these natural composites compared quite well to all these other materials classes. Uh, based on what nature has developed in nature here or basically over millions of years we've tried to mimic these structures using a technique called freeze casting this is a relatively simple method, also very thankful as it can be applied to many different uh, material systems. It's basically a top-down approach where we unidirectionally freeze cast a water ceramic particle slurry that is filled into such polymer uh, tube that is sitting on top of such copper coat finger uh, that is immersed basically in a bath of liquid nitrogen and on top of this copper coat finger we have a heating element sitting uh, that allows us basically to very fine tune and control uh, the temperature gradient from the bottom up to the slurry and thereby how fast uh, our suspension freezes into uh, the critical lamellae and therefore we can of course also control uh, the porosity of our material, of our scaffolds that we make, the wall thickness and of course also the surface roughness of these lamellae. At the beginning, or actually for quite a long time, we had uh, one little problem with this process as we only had one temperature gradient, uh, so in one direction, uh, the alignment of the uh, lamella was somewhat random in two different orientations and we got something like that is a uh, comparable problem to grains in a polycrystalline material uh, that the lamella worked in different directions and gave us kind of uh, variable results in terms of mechanical properties. Just recently we were able to kind of solve this problem by adding such wedge on top of our copper coat finger which uh, adds a second temperature gradient and therefore forces the freezing of these lamella in certain directions so that we end up with a monodomain structure over the entire cross section of our uh, copper coat finger and this gives us much better mechanical properties now in terms of strength and toughness. Back in 2008, we were also able to successfully use this technique to make a nato like uh, composite based on alumina with PMA. Of course, we freeze cast alumina in the slurry to create a nice lamella structure, which we then compressed. So we basically broke the lamella and ended up with a structure. The brick and mortar structure is quite comparable to our nature here. Um, and then we started to, of course, do mechanical tests, see how this material, this synthetic material, compares to uh, natural nacre, like for example, it's a fracture toughness test. As you can see here on nacre, we have our notch, we get all kinds of extrinsic toughening mechanisms on a global scale and on a local scale. On the global scale, we get this correct deflections out of the mode one plane, and on the local scale, we get the pull out of the individual platelets which basically is the same what we see in our synthetic material here from our tomography scans, very obvious, we get correct deflections and from the in-situ test we see we, we can get the pull-out of the individual bricks which gives us, similar to our R-curve that we have measured on NACA where we get an initiation toughness of about 5 MPa root meter that increases to about 8, 9 MPa root meter at a correct extension of only 0.5 millimeter, we get for the lamella structures an already increased fracture toughness 
at the same break extension of about 12 to 13 and here would be there with a similar break initiation toughness. However, when we now test the material that was closer to brick and mortar structure, we see that we can take advantage of all the different extrinsic toughening mechanisms leading to a lot of crack tip shielding and boosting our values from an already slightly higher initiation toughness all the way up to about 30 MPA root meter at break extension of about half a millimeter. Which in our HP plot puts now these uh, composites that we were able to create to the far right here uh, of, uh, compared to our natural composites, which is basically what we want to go with our damage tolerance materials. And while this is certainly good that we move right, we would rather go further up here as well, but the problem we had with this alumina PMMA composite was simply that we were limited in terms of strength and did not get much higher strengths uh, compared to Naker that uh, had a strength of about 80, 90 MPA. Uh, and the reason for that with this alumina was simply because alumina has a strength of, I think, 300 uh, GPA and we uh, had already 95, 90 to 95 volume percent of alumina compressed, so we could not get anything more in there, which kind of limited us uh, here in terms of the strength. In order to solve this problem, we had to kind of replace alumina with another uh, ceramic, and what we decided to go with was silicon carbide, simply as it has a higher strength, that's the logical next step. The only problem with silicon carbide and starting a new material system is that we basically have to not make a step back, we have to start from scratch as our freezing conditions completely changed, so we had to kind of uh, study all our key parameters and all our different uh, parameters that we, in terms of cooling rate and solid load content, that we need to control in order to get the ice crystallization uh, better under control and create structural features that boost our mechanical performance, not just up, uh, so that we get a uh, gain in strength, but also we need to make sure that we do not lose too much uh, toughness and ductility. If we look now at these two key parameters that we have played with and see how they influence our structures that we created, first of all, by keeping the solid load content uh, constant at 17 volume per cent silicon carbide, by changing the cooling rate now from negative 1 to about negative 15 degrees C uh, per minute, we can see that we get a significant change in structure and morphology. We basically get a refinement in the structure of this uh, scaffold. You can also see this here in this graph where we have the wall thickness over the freezing front velocity gets increase in wall thickness, but also a decrease in wavelength, which is basically the distance between the individual lamellae. But we also get a uh, change in morphology, which basically means that we get more bridges in between the individual lamellae. If we look at the other parameter now, uh, where we keep the cooling rate constant but increase the solid load uh, from 17 to 30 volume percent, and we can see the main thing that we got here was that we get a structural coarsening, which is also obvious here. We get a uh, much bigger wall thickness and also an increase in the wavelength. If we combine both factors, now we increase the solid load content again from 17 to 30 volume percent. Uh, but the cooling rate uh, to negative 5, you can see we get a mix of both of these uh, factors. We get a structural coarsening and the change in morphology with uh, more bridges in between these lamellae. In terms of mechanical properties, if we look now at lamella structures that we were able to create, we have yet not managed to uh, make brick and mortar structures because these silicon carbide PMMA uh, structures are much harder to press and form into uh, brick and mortar structures than it is the case for aluminum. However, we were able to successfully make such lamellae structures and uh, here we succeeded to make silicon carbide PMMA composites with 40 to 60 volume percent uh, silicon carbide here. In the, at the bottom four images, we can see that we also made subsets using uh, these parameters that we played with and that we uh, studied so carefully uh, to get different lamella thicknesses from very thick lamella to very thin lamella and some intermediate lamella thickness with less and more bridges in between these lamella. Overall, in terms of lectural strength, we can see that we get this expected increase in strength with increasing silicon carbide content, which is not really surprising and which is some, basically what we expected. What's way more interesting is these four different substructures where we found that the 
Tesla Melek gives us actually the worst uh, properties in terms of strength, whereas the intermediate lamella thickness with most bridges, the material with most bridges, showed the best performance in terms of strength, and the other two materials lie like somewhere in between. In terms of fracture toughness, we've also done, of course, fracture toughness tests, see similar failure characteristics as for Naker and our alumina PMA uh, material. We get pull out of the individual, uh, in this case, lamella, and also crack deflections. Uh, we see basically the expected trend of mutually exclusive strength and toughness. The material with the highest strength uh, showed the lowest toughness, lowest crack propagation resistance curves, and the one with the uh, lowest strength showed the best uh, crack resistance curve with the silicon carbon 50 pmma somewhere in between. Interest, it gets very interesting when we now look at these four uh, subsets of the silicon carbon 50 pmma. Because here, again, the material with the lower uh, lamella thickness showed now again the lowest uh, R curves, whereas again the material with the intermediate lamella thickness but the large number of bridges showed also the best uh, red resistance curve behavior in addition to the best strength. So there is obviously a very strong influence on this lamella thickness and these intermediate bridges that we have between this uh, individual lamella. Overall, I think we can say that we uh, were able to show that our material, first of all, compares quite well to commercial silicon carbide ceramics, which is certainly a good thing to say and see, as otherwise this whole project would not really make sense. Um, it's way more important, though, that we were able to show and figure out that even though we get this expected increase in uh, strength of the silicon carbide, uh, content and decrease in toughness, but there is obviously fine-tuning of these structures possible by playing with these uh, structural features like lamella thickness and morphology. Obviously, bridges in between this lamella uh, seem to be able to boost our strength without actually losing uh, too much toughness, which basically puts us in our Ashby plot here, uh, right on top of this uh, synthetic composites. We are certainly not as good in terms of toughness as we were with our brick and mortar alumina PMA composites. However, we are doing quite well compared to natural nacre. We are actually much better in terms of strength compared to nacre, almost double and comparable in toughness to nacre. And I think with that we have quite a good uh, basis to move on, try to make brick and mortar structure and further develop these materials. Which already brings me to the conclusion of this uh, talk and this presentation. We have seen that nacre inspired uh, structures are possible to be created by uh, freeze casting. Uh, as long as we understand and carefully study the key process and parameters, we are obviously capable of uh, architecturally fine tune and tailor these structures so that we can uh, get to a maximum in our main mechanical performance and then we can also achieve uh, similar features that we see in these natural materials which should help us to get these uh, materials, these synthetic materials to, uh, mechanic, to the mechanical point where they not just compare but bypass these natural materials and then we can also think about you know, boosting them, replacing for example the uh, polymer content PMMA to the metal so that we can also use it for high temperature application. With that I'm at the end and Thank you all for your attention.